It is interesting to watch the beginning of the DS9 episode to the death and analyze the implications of it. Let's even take a look at the beginning of the episode where we find the Defiant returning to DS9 after an attack. Apparently, one of the upper pylons is completely destroyed by a Jem'Hadar boarding party. According to Kira, the Jem'Hadar strike team was in and out before anyone knew what was going on. The Jem'Hadar utilized a transport ship so they wouldn't be caught and beamed on board to steal what they had to steal. My problem is that by this point, the station had been attacked by a Cardassian war fleet, had been attacked by a Klingon fleet, was near the border where the Cardassians and Klingons were slugging it out, and is ground zero should there be a Dominion assault. So when the Defiant is out on a mission, like it was for this episode, they have no other vessels to protect the station. We know there are no other ships because Sisko orders Kira to tell Starfleet to actually get vessels there. And then the Defiant bridge crew begin to debate whether the Defiant should always be at the station or not. <sighs> Look, I'm not mad that you continually show how idiotic Starfleet is from a military aspect Deep Space Nine episode. I'm just not surprised, and I'm disappointed. Bad episode. Bad. Like previous videos, I won't be doing a beat by beat breakdown. I'll be analyzing the significance of what we see that has context to the Dominion Gold War that ultimately will lead to the Dominion War itself. I feel this episode is significant in some ways, not because the Dominion are in it, indeed I've skipped over episodes that have the Dominion in them because they don't play any real role in what I'm trying to do, but I feel this episode gives the true mentality of the Federation at this time. While a definitive shift is occurring, we still see vestiges of the Starfleet pacifism that I am so fond of discussing from TNG. A Sinopo the synopsis of this episode is pretty easy. While hunting the Jem'Hadar that attacked the station, Sisko and his crew run into a Dominion patrol that they will team up with to kill the rogue Jem'Hadar before said Jem'Hadar can destroy both governments. This alliance that we see throughout this interaction only further proves to me that Starfleet's morals stop at the door if it involves them getting their hands dirty. Even if we assume that this is a special case, that Sisko teams up with bad guys to take out even worse people, they still are teaming up with the Dominion and we get to see what kind of empire that really is. And we also see how Starfleet isn't going to do anything really after this episode, not until a while later. Anyway, back to it. As I've stated, the Defiant finds a disabled Jem'Hadar ship about to explode and saves those on it. The Vorta, a little person by the name of Weyun that won't amount to much, so just ignore him, will talk to Sisko and both sides realize they are after the same group of criminals. The conversation between Sisko and the little known character is extremely insightful into future events. Weyun first butters up Sisko and offers to give him ultimate control over Starfleet. Sisko, of course, declines and they move on to the business at hand. Weyun states that he knows where the rogue Jem'Hadar are, but needs Sisko to help eliminate them. Another word for kill. Sisko never declines to help assassinate the rogue Jem'Hadar, but is confused why Weyun doesn't do it himself. After all, the power of the Dominion is vast, they could have hundreds of ships there. Weyun retorts that they don't have enough time. It is discovered that the rogue Jem'Hadar have control of Iconian tech that would be able to destroy the Dominion, and then ultimately even the Federation. To be fair, Sisko does initially act like the destruction of the Dominion isn't his problem, but even if we remove the fact that they would attack the Federation, I believe that he was most likely bluffing. I don't believe that he would sit back and allow that to happen. After all, a lot of the Dominion are innocent member states. The plan is pretty easy. Blow the Iconian gateway to hell and back with bombs. Unfortunately, the facility is unable to be breached with quantum torpedoes. Apparently, the structure is made with stuff that can withstand quantum attacks. Luckily, the Dominion never thought to put that metal on their ships. We see the stark difference between the two sides, with the Dominion soldiers believing they should stay and die to ensure the Iconian gateway is destroyed when the operation occurs, and the crew of the Defiant wanting to live. In order to better facilitate the attack, they decide to integrate both crews, and that's intriguing. We see the Jem'Hadar and the Vorta walking around with no armed escort. Both the Federation and Dominion appear to get to know each other a lot better. In fact, Jem'Hadar are allowed on the bridge of the Defiant. Which is crazy to me. I understand that they're working together, but to allow the Jem'Hadar on the Defiant's bridge is a huge risk. 
We also learn about the vital necessity of the narcotics that are used to keep the Jem'Hadar in line. These peaceful relations wouldn't last as both Worf and a Jem'Hadar are continuously antagonistic with each other throughout the episode. This culminates to a brawl in the mess hall, and ultimately the Jem'Hadar first would kill the Jem'Hadar that Worf had been having a lover's quarrel with. Because Sisko isn't absolutely insane, he simply restricts Worf to his quarters. Both the murderous Jem'Hadar first and Sisko would have an argument on how to appropriately discipline their men, ending with Sisko being threatened by the first. Ultimately, the mission would be successful, the Dominion soldiers and Starfleet officers fighting valiantly together, Sisko even risking his life for the first. The first Jem'Hadar, who had threatened Sisko, kills Weyoun for the Vorta doubting that the first and his men would be loyal to the Dominion. The interaction ends with the first telling Sisko that Sisko did fight well, but the next time they meet, both would be enemies. Foreshadowing for the win. Let's analyze what we have learned from the Dominion here. The Jem'Hadar, a cloned slave race, is not 100% loyal to their cloned masters. The Dominion utilizes narcotics to keep them in line. Some of the Jem'Hadar wish to be free. The Jem'Hadar will also kill one of their own for disobeying simple orders. Moving even more into the Jem'Hadar not being completely blinded is the fact that some of the Jem'Hadar look at Odo with disdain, that he is a traitor. His god status is not of concern to some. This is never observed from the Vorta, at least not in this episode. The Jem'Hadar appear to have more freedom of thought, as I've discussed. That would be interesting information for Starfleet. The Vorta, even now, offer to try and bribe a Starfleet officer, wanting to give him ultimate control over Starfleet in an attempt to overthrow the democratically elected officials of the Federation. The Vorta are additionally cloned as well, programmed to love their Dominion masters. And even with all of this information, we know that Starfleet would continue to want peaceful resolutions with the Dominion. They, in effect, would be okay with the slavery that was occurring because they didn't want a war with the Dominion, even though there are some slaves that want to break free. Here's the thing that people get so mad at me about. They don't understand my problems here. I'm not necessarily saying that it's a bad idea from a pragmatic standpoint to not do anything. Starfleet will barely be able to take out the Dominion in the Alpha Quadrant when that war happens. Can you imagine a war when the full industrial might of the Gamma Quadrant is included? But pragmatism is not something that Starfleet is known for at this point. The Starfleet ethos, everything we have learned from the next generation and even from Deep Space Nine up to this point is that Starfleet is the pinnacle of brightness that fights against oppression, even if it comes at the cost of themselves and their lives. So their willingness to do nothing about this, to step back. It's the smart move, but it's incredibly on Starfleet. While I did consider that perhaps they would try to culturally change the Dominion, that the point was to let their values seep over, this, again, is not how Starfleet operates. Now this happens, we know that Starfleet ultimately infects other cultures to their benefit and causes all kinds of problems, but their claim is that they don't do that on purpose, that they're not trying to. Remember Sisko's speech to the wormhole aliens, that they aren't there to overthrow someone with ideas, but to learn from them and share those ideas to become better. The fact that the Federation still seeks peace with the Dominion is, in my opinion, a betrayal of the values we learned from the time of the next generation till now. But I don't know that it isn't the right choice. A war with the Dominion, especially an attempt to overthrow them, is idiocy. Attempting peaceful relations is the best choice for the survival of the United Federation of Planets at least at this time. The last piece I want to discuss here is Sisko's reaction. A Jem'Hadar raiding party attacks. They go after the Jem'Hadar only to find out that these Jem'Hadar are rogue and don't want to be a part of the Dominion. They want to overthrow the Dominion. Sisko just takes Weyoun's word for it that these Jem'Hadar will attack the Federation. He never seeks them out. He never attempts negotiations. This seems like the best chance to have a better Dominion. Now, people will scream Prime Directive when it comes to this, but this isn't the first time Starfleet has done something of this nature. And after all, if the Dominion is evil, what is better than helping the slaves become the masters? I don't know, though. I think that's worth another video at some point, but all of these are my opinions. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below.